So we're back around the kitchen table, and this time we have a, a, our surprise guest, mystery guest, Mark Johnson. I've been a journalist for about 17 years. Um, I've worked in print, online, and broadcast, and most recently I was working for Bloomberg Television in London. Bloomberg, part of the kind of traditional news structure. Um, a friend of mine who works for the BBC, he once told me a story that every six months all the kind of major news editors get together and uh, they, they have a big agenda of what they're going to sort of, you know, cover in the next six months. And the top is positive news. And then they also look at it and they go, mm, and then they go, right, now what about Afghanistan? Should we talk about that? Altogether much more interesting. <laughs> um, I think what you're asking is positive news versus negative news. Yeah, kind and, of. And why does the latter dominate the agenda? You know, nothing terrible happened today as a headline. <laughs> it really grabbed me personally. And, and also, if you only got positive news, um, how would you know how to plan for your life? By knowing that something's on the horizon that's not necessarily positive, allows you to take action now to put things in place around your life to perhaps protect yourself. We need to have realism, but I think we also need to have uplifting as well. Unfortunately, remember also that um, the last three years, there, there hasn't been a lot to be too happy about. And those things are very, very important. And I think to reduce the importance of them and, and or consider the happy story. No, but and actually those, those, those are the things that are bringing, us, are bringing us back together. And those are we, things yeah. that create community. What we've discovered at Positive TV in the last two years is that there are some very extraordinary things that are happening outside of the crisis, what is emerging through. And I think we need to focus on that in the news too. You're, you're absolutely right. But I mean, you have to be balanced and you have to see both of sides. Of course. Okay, so I mean that is, that is kind of what we're talking about here is the mm. balance of it. And it yeah. seems like the, you know, the balance is heavily in favour of you know, fear based news if you like and I, I mean, I've always had a personal feeling that that fear-based news kind of controls the people to to us sitting around this table in you know relatively safe London um, it, it may may be slightly pious of us to say things like that because to people in Afghanistan or Iraq whose very next 24 hours depend heavily on the world knowing that something is going on mm. there may actually have a completely different idea of why they think their story should be top of the agenda. Yeah. And don't you think in the times, the critical times we live in, that news has to take some responsibility and start looking at solutions? You're absolutely right. And, and I think a lot of responsibility is taken for those, yeah. those, those stories. Unfortunately, I don't think that um, people drive the news agenda. I think events drive, mm. drive the news mm. agenda. Um, but a friend of mine was in Haiti three weeks before the earthquakes. As soon as the, the earthquakes came in, Twitter actually became the only news source that he really had from the people actually there. Yes, Twitter, Twitter is a news source now. And Twitter is a news yeah. source. This is, this is why it's a really interesting moment in history mm. because we cannot disseminate news faster than a social networking site. We are able for the first time to take our news and then go on one of these things and do our own research or sit down at our computer and go on the internet and get much more information around that news event or that news story. So we actually have the power um, for the first time in history to actually say, I'm going to act on that and I'm going to act on it right now. The news operation in the world is actually going through massive change right now and it doesn't know what it needs to become next. So we've seen all sorts of things. We've seen people sitting behind desks go to in front of the desk and sit behind lots the kitchen of table. natural <laughs> choreography sitting behind a kitchen table, exactly. But actually I don't think anyone has really nailed it. Mm. And the thing is that, that TV news Radio news, newspapers, even online websites are all competing with each other for our attention. I think what's going to happen in the future is you'll have lots of smaller niche um, providers. Their stories will be picked up by the larger providers, so at the moment, if you like, the BBCs, who will see a story that has merit and they'll take it on board. And maybe even one day you guys, guys like Positive TV will get the credit for having originated it. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's what we're dreaming at. Thank you. Mark, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers.